Morning guys. We're going to do a 1510. I'm back up to 1500 in both Rapid and Blitz. And we have Vladimir French, who is playing a Sicilian. Not a French, so I'm playing this, uh, calls it the slow variation. But it's really a Grand Prix. All right, 1704. I haven't faced the 1700 in a while. Okay, I think in general, because I've got my bishop here, you see, my bishop can recapture the queen. So I'm not too worried about D, E, D, E, queen takes queen, because I can recapture the bishop. So for that reason, I can just go ahead. And because you need to say to yourself, all right, is there any reason why I can't continue to develop here? Oh, this is, a, look at all this. One, one, two, three, four, five pawn moves in his first five moves, look. Funny one. Right, there's still kitten chaos going on. Two down. Two down, three to go. Um, <laughs> right, now he chooses to develop a piece. So I've got bits of fish and meatball in my teeth. <sighs> so e5 is an idea. The point is actually he's, he's got two attackers on this pawn now. So he could actually win a pawn with takes. Now e5 with tempo kicks the knight. That would be awkward for black. Really makes life hard for this bishop. This or this. I think we do it. Wow, look at that. Got it. Got the bit of fish. All right. See us breakfast today. Eight meatballs, ninety percent beef. Um, half or a smoked mackerel. Three free-range eggs, all fried in half an ounce of lard, pig fat. Okay, so we have this kind of advanced pawn in the centre. I think we just proceed, and this is the general idea. We're going to bring our queen to here or here. This bishop now, I don't know if it's going to fianchetto, but this is now kind of a waiting move. Who's growling? Don't growl. We don't growl when we play chess. It's kind of unsportsmanlike. Rugby, you can growl. Okay, there goes the bishop. So now we have some clarity. And the bishop can't come to this square, okay? So I do have this with the immediate threat against g7. This is an interesting move, you know, where he's put his knight here. So queen g3 looks very natural. f5 can come kind of forcing a breakage if I want. f5, f6. Now, I don't want to play f5 now. He just takes. So let's play queen g3. Opponent's playing quickly, he's on 15.40 when he, his turn came up. Okay, so notice this pawn is now, pew, you are pinned, you are out of the game. Okay, and what that means is that this pawn is not defending this pawn. So if I now push f5, I'm threatening to take here, this pawn can't recapture. I'm also threatening to take here, or even, I think f5 has to be played, it opens up my bishop. If I take and bishop takes, bishop takes, queen takes, queen takes, pawn takes. Huh. Hmm. If I kick him, I think if I kick him. He can't go there. He might. He might take. So kick takes, bishop takes, probably. From here, the bishop could come here, possibly. We've also got rook takes tonight. I think kick. This pawn's defended enough against two attackers. Okay, big question now. 
I'm in check. So, if I take, you can simply capture on here, can't you? If I take with the bishop, you can. If I take with the rook, my bishop's kind of awkward for the time being. Also notice this move might come as well. That attacks the bishop and this pawn is pinned and can't take. And neither can the bishop. I think, I, I, I don't know, something's just saying bishop. You know, my bishop could stick itself on h5 and... Now he gets to take here. What is this? Queen g4. And he takes, I can't take back. Can go there. Here he takes, I can't take back. I'd like to maintain this pin, but I'm not gonna hurt myself to do it. I don't wanna have an aneurysm. There, I can always put my bishop here, yeah? I can't actually if he takes. He's gonna take there. Hmm. This I have two attackers on this pawn. He can summon another defender with uh, bishop e6. And can my knight come around? That's that's not bad. I think it's time to develop the knight. Queen has to defend this. This is... There we go. So bishop's done that. Knight there, there looks nice. Do I want to prevent this pawn from advancing with a discovery on my queen? Mm. Is it slow to do that? Do I want to sack this? Pawn takes. King's opened up. Kind of like this move. The alternative is to start bringing the knight around. Hits this bishop. Essentially goes here to h5. Can I just tickle this bishop? If he goes here, two pawns down. How did that happen? Let's improve the knight. Opponent's still playing very fast. Got 16 minutes on the clock. Okay. Problem is that bishop's now kind of locked into a good position. Knight here is an option. If bishop takes, I've got bishop takes, I connect my rooks. Threatening to take out this bishop. Then then he actually gets to undouble his pawns and capture towards the centre. Fairly straightforward, just push on. C3 completes my chain. He can't he can't push this, it just doesn't. There, F takes. So now we have quite a closed position. C and D are actually closed. This is pretty much closed for the time being.
Now around comes his knight. Oh, I'm going to do this. I don't think I... But this pawn's quite well defended right now. G4 takes, bishop takes. It's kind of a high risk approach. Knight here. I mean, that would be a lovely outpost if I can get rid of this pawn. But I can't. No, go away. Go away. Talking to the boys and girls about the chess. I know, excuse me. Okay. <sighs> Could come back here with my queen. Pivot my knight around. I'm kind of expecting this move. Okay. This is Sasha. She's, um... On her last legs, aren't you, babe? Final, final lap. The bell's gone. Ding, ding. Final lap. But she's very happy. She's been ill for two years. We've been uh, treating her. Okay. Here and now, this threat is renewed. If bishop takes h6. Okay, and of course he blocks. I can hurry the knight away. It's still over 15 minutes. And I've even played an unusual line. Okay, there's no escape for the queen here. So we can force a trade and go into an ending two pawns up. But I have the bishop pair. Knight will take. I want to keep the bishop pair for sure. Also, here's double pawns, which is maybe half a pawn kind of weaker. Tax, he doesn't have this, this, he has to go back there. Can attack him with a rook. Oh! There, and the knight goes back. No downside to that pawn move that I can see. So this is the kind of player I have to be beating to uh, improve, clearly. Right, I feel like it's time to activate my rooks. I think king g2. The knight can't advance right now. This pawn is a weakness. There you go. This pawn is now effectively pinned because bishop takes with a skewer. Can I stick my bishop in there now? I feel like that's kind of annoying, just on a hunch, you know. This pawn is no longer pinned. This bishop takes, fails to rook takes bishop. So, F and H are the only semi-open semi files for me. So I'm going to stick a rook on F as well just for that reason. And what I want to do is be an awkward son of a bitch now. I'm going to make it very hard for my opponent to make any progress in this game. Yes, he has two extra pawns, right? Th this is one of them, and let's say one of these is one of them. But they're actually in his way, almost. Okay, he's going to try and bust through here. I go there, he pushes there, that's kind of deadlock. There, he pushes there, I can take, take, and just hold. If he pushes here, again, I, I'm not too concerned. Bishop defends that, that's not defended, but again, it's a very locked up position. If I break here, if I break here and he takes... I don't know. I mean, he ought to do, be doing better. But I'm just going to try and be awkward, I think. So 
surprised how well he played at the start. Playing all his moves quickly. I've seen so many cheetah games recently. Grandmaster Simon Williams, Grandmaster Naroditsky. Facing cheetahs, man. Not saying this guy is, but he has played with very high accuracy and very little time. And quite, you know, you have to be suspicious these days, man. There's a lot of this stuff going around. Okay, he wants to push, does he? That takes. I need to get something behind enemy lines, don't I? Okay, let's go. I'm going to bring my king over here, actually. And put him in a defensive role. Okay. So if takes, takes. If if takes, I can actually take with the bishop. So. And the bishop then defends. Becomes a tall pawn, but it's also attacking a5. So I'm thinking I want to, want to double up. Because I, I think the h file is kind of a done deal right now. But the action area could be F. I'm going to offer him, offer him a draw. He actually loses three points if he draws. Okay, now we again we have closed, closed. That, that, that was slightly odd, that. Com okay, closed, closed, closed. The way is shut. It was made by those who are dead and the dead keep it. The way is shut. Now, that doesn't favour bishops, but it doesn't really favour knights either. Because if you think about it, how does a knight get through this wall? Can it go to this square to get here? No, because it's guarded. Same with all these. All right, so what squares can he go to safely? He can go to these light squares, because the dark squares are shut. Right? But from, the, from these light squares, he can't get through either. So he's he's got problems. Now I have bishop looking at this. So let's say if I push g4, takes, bishop takes. It's a thought. Pushes the the. While we're here, I might just check out his. Uh, no. Okay, I was going to say check out his uh, recent results, but. Okay, so he's now got three defenders on this pawn here. Uh, I'm just going to dick about my, with my king. I have seen the game, I think with either Levy or Eric Rosen coming up against the computer cheater and forcing it into a draw or, or forcing them to flag even. Now he thinks. I think this is his longest think of the game. No, he's, he's had one for 31 seconds. I'll move 32. That was this move, which I didn't think was particularly good. Okay. Bishop then. Isn't just everything now closed? How on earth does he get through? He's going to play knight here. So maybe I'm not going to put my bishop there. I'm going to just put my bishop here. There's no reason to court danger, is there? Knight here. And you see, knight here, he, he can't come in there, he can't come in there. So if I put my bishop here, it brings his knight here, I just slide it back. Oh! Sh suddenly something happened. Okay. Now bishop here. 
Bishop here, knight here. I can take with check. He can't take because of this. Skewers king and rook. But if knight here, I take with check. He's in check. He can't take with the king. I take king takes. Well, it's all going down in this little corner, isn't it? Here. Knight. Well, I don't know what that was. What is that? Takes and king takes. Ah, he's preventing my bishop from going to this square. No, I'll take anyway. I can get a rook, a uh, bishop in. My king is now on the open file. We have an open file on the board. He's going to take with king or rook. He takes with rook. Just want to get my king off the open file, I think. Now this knight's kind of stuck where it is because this this just wins material and equalizes. So the knight's stuck. I can't recapture, so I have to trade. I have two rooks looking at this pawn. <clears throat> How does he add another defender to this pawn? He has to play knight here, right? That's defended twice. If he pushes, he loses it. So knight there. This rook is, well, no, no he's, it, this pawn's actually defended two, two times. Okay, let's put it back. I can do this all day. Now I have this as well. I can annoy the rook. The rook moves sideways. Can't go there. Now the knight is stuck defending this because the pawn will be pinned. Might just play rook here. Oh, hello. Okay. Our last capture is on move 40, so we've only had three moves, three point three and a half moves. You're going to try the oh, bishop's kind of out of squares, and now this rook's also out of squares with that last move. So I think I might need to play that shuffle game where you slide the tiles around to make room. You now we rearrange the picture. This is kind of annoying though. Being annoying is annoying as well. Me. I have a square for my bishop, so his knight can't force it off the board. The queen side of the board is still completely locked up, which gives us less to worry about, you know. He should just be able to grind this down quite easily. I 
And I have to say, I'm kind of feeling uninspired about this game. I think he got an early advantage. It's worth looking at how he got two pawns in front. Offer another draw. It is a dull game that could go on for some time. I think in chess, if you get 50 moves without a capture or a pawn move, then it's a draw by default. Let's resign it, sod it. <sighs> dear, oh dear, oh dear. Very boring. Oh, look at this. We had an advantage. This was a mistake. And I missed it. What should I have done? H4 is a blunder. Is it takes? No, it's also a blunder. Push. Why did, didn't I think of that? That was the only good position I had. But again, later on, we had a slight edge here after that. And I took. I didn't think there was any other option. After this, I took... Retry. No. Reveal an attack on a pawn, it said. That? That's really hard to see because the bishop hangs. But then we do have this. So he has to take, right? And then D takes. And the rook has to move. Wow. There you go, just not, not that quick. All right, let's try another one. Let's see if we can get somebody around our own rating. Okay, 1558. I'm 1542, we have a Scandi, I'm going Black Gonna go von Popiel if we can. Okay, now this is a French, so we're gonna transpose into a Dima Dum. It actually really helps you when it says what the opening is by the side of the board. Stops you having to kind of recognize it for yourself. And he's Ah completely declined with H6. If I push I take away F6 from the knight. I could defend this pawn with my knight, but that's pinnable. And we don't have control over this. So, for example, if this pins, there's no queen a4, check. Well, there is, but then knight comes out and blocks. And I'm still pinned, which means this pawn still hangs. So I'm going to push forward. I like the fact that I've got an early center. Not uncommon. I think just develop the knight. It's very natural. So it's interesting with that analysis that, you know, even though you're thinking, right, this is the trend of the game, there can be points where suddenly there's a, a chink. Uh, where light could break through. This is kind of awkward move. So this is a tall pawn. So what he's done is he's put his bishop in the pawn chain, acting like a pawn, defending this, defended by that. Um, 
think I'd like to get castled. I, I don't know where to put my bishop, though. This is just silly, because it prompts c6 with tempo, so... Having said that, if c6, it makes life harder for that knight as well. Um, this pawn has made itself into a hook, which is interesting. So I might like to develop that, maybe get the queen behind it at some point. But let's, I think here, I think d3. Is this pawn, this, sorry, this square on h7 might prove to be actionable later on. Okay, knight attacks his pawn, it's defended once. Let's put another bishop on it. And put my queen on d2, maybe knight here. Queen on d2 creates a battery here. Against the hook pawn on h6. Knight here around to b3 would add a second defender to this pawn. Quite often a key key square in a lot of French openings. I'm inclined to say, get off my land. Get off my land. You silly French bishop, you uh, here. He retreats. I take, he recaptures with knight. Da -da. I play knight b to d2. So it's defended by something other than the g pawn and the queen so that the queen gets to move. But then how do I put my, I want to put my queen on, on this dark square diagonal as well. That's the issue. Oh, also, oh no, it's okay. That's defended by the bishop as well. Good thinking, auntie. Okay, I think this is kind of called for. Back comes the bishop anyway. Okay, I was going to play this move all the same, wasn't I? So now I've takes, queen takes, and I've completed development. This pawn is defended by almost everything. It's all my defended, developed pieces are defending that pawn. All right, now. <sighs> Rook AC1 makes a bunch of sense. I'm just thinking f4, f5 would be great, but my horse is in the way. My horse, he cannot go here. My horse, he can go here. Potentially. My horse, he can go here as well. But then he can't really make forward progress from there. Knight h2 looks kind of weird and funky, but opponent's still not castled. Opponent wants to castle. He can't go there or there or there. So he's going to stick his bishop there, or he's going to stick his bishop there. A3 could kick kick him back. Um, so he's probably going to put his bishop here, yeah? But then when he castles, do I, do I just want to drop my queen back and reinstate this idea? Or do I want to think about f4, f5 idea? He's maybe this hook, you see. Also notice he has no light squared bishop, so my h3 pawn is, is no longer a, a hook. Is this stupid? Am I just being local? Neil, this is local. Pawn can't take because it hangs the knight. Hang on, hang on. There, pushes. Still hangs the knight. If bishop goes there and, and then I push. So let's say I, I do something. I kind of like this. He can't push because the knight hangs. See, that's the, one, of the, one of the problems with this. He's put his knight on a square, it's defended only by one pawn. It's kind of a key pawn, it's kind of a weak pawn. There he can't push because knight hangs with check. There he can't take because knight hangs with check. What else has he got? I'm threatening to take this pawn with check. What else has he got? Puts his bishop here, I take with check. King has to take.
It's... Oh, okay. I can take the check anyway, yes? And then the knight hangs unless king takes. If king takes, I have queen here check. Do I not? I do declare I do. Now, king... And then the king can't stay there, 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 or there. So king, he must go here or here or here. Or queen blocks. You see, the problem is, if the, queen, if the king goes to any of these squares, then my queen that's here takes that knight. So I go here. His queen's going to block. I can't take that pawn with check because of the knight. Ah. I can check with the knight. This queen blocks. Knight e5 check. Knight takes knight. Queen takes queen. King takes queen. Pawn takes with check. Oh, I don't know. But whatever happens, like we have this, yeah? We have nice, safe king. I'm struggling to see any advantage of knight takes e5 check. I could do this and trade queens. I don't really want to trade queens. What about the immediate knight takes check? Knight takes here, then queen blocks. That's not a problem. These are these key positions, you know. Queen blocks, queen here. I'm going to do it. He's going to figure this out pretty quickly. He's already figured it out. Okay, queen here. Um, this knight is actually defended by the bishop, so taking out that knight is not really a thing. I take there. Knight will take. Queen can't take. Queen's actually pinned. Knight will take. Queen takes knight. Just go here and then knight there. This knight's now pinned, so that would be a fork. Yeah, so knight e5 check. The king must move. Knight can't take because it's in an absolute pin. If queen takes, pawn takes queen, so that's not on either. Okay, so knight e5 check, king moves, I have two attacks on this knight. Happy days. I should really have analysed that game, particularly the, the opening, that last game in the Sicilian, and figured out why I, I got that disadvantage at the opening as well. But it's, it's really, it, I do think it's odd, because I played a really offbeat opening. Okay, he's, he's evaded the whole issue. Now, we are not up material right now. I'd love to take that pawn. So what I'm thinking is, kick the knight away. The knight is the only friend of the pawn, yeah? Doesn't matter, it doesn't matter if it attacks my rooks. I take this pawn with check on the king. Something must be done. King must move or queen blocks. Either way, okay. I take the pawn with check on the king. Good. Now we have a material advantage. It's not much. It's only little pawn. It's only wafer thin. I have a wafer thin advantage. That king's in a right awkward spot now. Could come back here and pin the knight. Um, this knight in here looks nice. Hits this pawn. Go there with a the fork, yeah? Yeah, you feeling this? He's got two attackers on here. It's currently defended twice. Maybe I need to defend that pawn. Oh, no. Defended three times. Okay, knight in. Knight in. I'm really now wanting to press on his... That was played quickly. Is there some evil trap here? What? I take the bishop. 
queen can take this. My queen can take the bishop as well. If queen takes pawn, I've got I've got bishop d4 hitting the queen and I don't get guys what am I missing here? What am I missing? I don't I don't see it. I have pawn takes, I have queen takes, winning material. Oh! I missed it. He took the knight. Okay. All right, fair play, fair play, fair play. Uh, okay. Bishop takes c5. It wasn't just bishop c5. All right. So I have to recapture, I'll still be a pawn up. Mystery solved. It was the janitor all along. I think this, I, I think I'd like to open up this pawn. This bishop, sorry. Give it the nice diagonal. Okay, I might defend this pawn now. Here pins the knight. No, I think defending the pawn. I'm a bit down on time. Also hitting b7. And my king is snug as a bug in a rug. This pawn is defended by bishop. Defended, defended, defended. Everything's defended. The the. This pawn's defended only by the queen. So you could, for example, make that an orange to say it's defended only once. Orange, you know? But it's a thought. Undefended. 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 Knight is defended. Obviously, rooks are now joined. This is the defensive relationships. This is the goldfish method. All right. I feel like it's time to activate... A rook, Mr. A rook. And I feel like it's time to keep up pressure. Now, how do we feel about this? This is a bit silly. He's attacked three times. Okay, rook ad1. And if I get to trade, I mean, you can recapture a few ways. He doesn't have to recapture the rook. If you capture this with a, with a rook, I take b. And that means it really weakens all these pawns and stuff like that. I have this as an idea. This, I don't think it's playable right now because it's attacked three times. Defended only twice, so no. No. But bishop here, here, is quite good. It's on a square, it's def defended by pawn. I kind of like that. Do we want to just trade stuff off? Queen here attacks the knight, which means it's defended only by the queen. I like this, though. They're still attacked three times, defended twice. Uh, I'm still inclined to play this somehow. Reposition my bishop so it's looking down the correct area of the board. Right now, it's not brill. Okay. Done. I'm on 7 minutes, opponent's on 14. Looks like being a nice day on planet Earth again today. Opponent is also now entirely without bishops after that uh, trade that eluded me and baffled me for so long. Okay, knights. I don't want to trade on his... I think I'm just going to capture there. 
Now you see if knight takes, I then pin the knight. If queen takes, kind of same deal really. I hit the queen. Um, not worried about this. Am I worried about the knight coming in there? I don't know, but I'm lining it up with the queen. I'm lining it up with his majesty as well. I'm threatening maybe even ideas of this. Rook f e1. Trading rooks is still an idea. Okay, now how do we feel, boys and girls, about this move? What does he do? Rook g8 is an idea. Queen g5 is an idea. But I'm getting right up in his face. I'm also attacking an undefended pawn here. I'm not only threatening checkmate, but I'm misad attacking the undefended pawn. Sorry, that's kind of a Mexican Jar Jar Binks. I do apologize. Cross between Jar Jar Binks and Speedy Gonzalez. Some of y'all are going to be sitting there at home going, who the hell is Speedy Gonzalez? Well, you weren't raised in the set. Oh, well, there's a thought. Didn't I missed that one. Defended square, discovered defense of the pawn, blocking the attack on this one. Now, however, hey, I was a pawn ahead, now I'm not. Hmm, however, I do have a bishop. <coughs> okay, hmm. Right, I don't want to trade queens at this time. I'm thinking this. Okay, what if I trade rooks here? Queen cannot take because he get mated, right? I trade rooks. Knight takes his paw. I trade rooks. It's check. Rook takes. Okay. Um, I'm just inclined to dodge my queen out of the way for now. Rook takes, rook takes. It's okay. You see how this bishop, which was really bad just a few moves ago, yeah? It took me a couple of moves. But now, suddenly, this bishop is becoming a really key piece. Because it, it supports this potential attack. Now, that queen is stuck defending that pawn for the time being. Unless he wants to put his rook out of any attacking role. In a completely defensive role. I have to tell you guys, this Dima Dum Gambit, by the way, has got me so many quick wins. Oh, we might look at it quickly after the game. I think it is the most, in points-wise, like, right, rating-wise, oh man, I feel dirty. I'm a Gambit ho. Uh, Rook DE1 here, by the way, this is just kind of springing to mind. Means the Queen can't defend there. The Queen, where's the Queen going to go? Here? She can't go here, she gets took. She goes here. That's just a bit more passive. She's off the open file. I think I need to dominate that open file. So if he doesn't trade rooks, I think rook de1, or even rook fe1. Rook fe1. Might even be good. Yeah, it, it, it is the filthiest gambit. I love this structure as well, you know. One good thing about bishops in an endgame, I've just realised really, which is not true for knights, is that they can mutually defend. Right? This bishop defends this pawn, the pawn also defends the bishop. This pawn defends this pawn, right? Everything there is safe. Now, do the same thing with a knight. Yeah, the pawn defends the knight, pawn defends the, the pawn, but this guy's undefended. You know what I'm saying? Okay. If I go here and he takes my rook, I have to take back. If rook d e1, the queen she under attack. 
And I might have ideas of going to this square. I'm going to play rook d e1. I've taught myself out of that. Because the problem is here, right, I'm attacking the queen. But this actually pins the... Yeah? If I go there and rook takes d1, this guy on here would be pinned. And then cannot take the queen. Okay, but anyway, it's a moot point because of this. Now, if I take queen, king comes out on the board. I'd like to threaten that somehow. Do I just drop back and like be cool? That might be an idea. I just just drop right back. And just chilling. We chilling. Yeah. Bring my rook e3, g3. Pin this pawn. That direction. Attacking the pawn. And then, something like this is a threat. We had the same thing in the last game. That, that hook pawn that had advanced one square. You've got to be careful about it. Because if it's only defender is its adjacent pawn and the adjacent pawn is in front of the king you can take out this guy once having put a major piece on this file rook or queen so this knight is a problem to nobody right now we have a three on two advantage on the king side we have a three and two two on three disadvantage on the queen side but that's that's fine because opponents making no moves to advance these pawns, and this rook is sitting there with its winkle in its hand, to be fair. So, okay, I'm liking this idea. What are you doing? You want to lift a rook as well, do you? Well, two can play at that game. Let's do it. What about this, and then this? Right now, the queen's the only defender of the thing, right? If I go here, here, the rook is pinned. Oops, let's do it in blue. The rook is pinned. Queen has to defend the rook, so the queen's going to go there, eh? Hmm. Here, and I'm simply threatening to take the pawn. If he goes here, he loses material. So I'm going to play that quickly. Oh, well, that can't be good. He's seen the threat. That just can't be good. He has to take back with H, pawn. <sighs> okay, undefended. That is defended by queen. Undefended. We have two undefended. So when you see two undefended things on the board, right? Then you can say, well, is there an intersection between these? Is there a square from which I can hit both? Well, no, not really. But it's worth asking the question. Okay. I would like my queen to attack that pawn. Queen c1. Defends the back rank again. He's going to have a job now. He's going to have a right job. Point is, these, these two pawns are doubled and isolated, which means neither pawn can ever defend the other. So now I'm creating a problem by attacking this pawn. Here wouldn't work. Queen takes queen. <sighs> Can't even draw simple lines. Right then. So I, I feel like I have an edge. I feel like I'm a good pawn up here. Okay, defense. All right. Um, time to cold up, calm down. We don't want to get excited. Rookie one. Just gives it more scope. This is a real weakness. How can I attack that and that? This square is covered by the knight. How can I attack that? <sighs> Not easily. The thing is, if we trade queens, I should be better. Clearly better. I've got three against one and a half, kind of, on the king side. And I have a bishop. And the bishop can cover both sides of the board in a single bound. Whereas the knight is just looking really, really sluggish. 
However, I'm down to three minutes, so let's make a move. Maybe double up here, maybe do this, maybe trade queens, go into an ending. Got 10 second increment, I'm not bothered. His 10 minutes is not really going to serve him very well at this point, I don't think. Are there any really good squares on this board for me? Just got to watch out for the squares that this knight covers. It's not dangerous. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. Don't want to give him any chance to undouble. Uh, I could go here. Tax this pawn. That doesn't work. Lord, well, no. Thought you might. Thought you might, mate, but. Uh, There any takes and takes, I get a pass pawn. I'm okay with that. I do not want to undouble his pawns. There is zero point in doing that. These are going to be a liability for black throughout the game, and I think his king is going to have to defend them. King is good at defending several squares in a a tight, you know, perimeter quite well. I now have a completely passed pawn because there's no pawn on the F file, there's no pawn on the D file. Right, so put a rook behind the passed pawn. Kind of rule number one of passed pawns. And dance it up the board, rule number two. But this is when I, as long as I'm sure I'm not making a mistake move, and again, look, this having this. Uh, construct really secure there is lovely for me. So this knight is going to be slow and ponderous. Right, that is undefended. That is undefended. That is undefended. So wouldn't it be great to get a rook on the seventh rank? Well, it would. So he's stopping me going here. Let's go here. Keep the pressure up. Let's do it again. Now I can't go there because he's got two attackers on it, but I might do this. The king is stuck defending this. This is under attack by the bishop, right? And that, I think, simply drops a pawn. Let's think it through. He takes, rook takes, uh, should be winning. We trade rooks. I can do this at any time, but I don't have to do it yet. Let's improve the king. Hey, this this pawn is probably going to stay there because I want to defend it by my bishop with my bishop. Okay, I have a check here. That is not convincing for me because this king can't advance from that place. So let's bring it all the way back. King can't go there. Can't go there. Okay, I'm going to go. If I stay on an opposite color to the knight, by the way, I can never be checked by the knight. Straight away. Uh, <clears throat> so I continue to defend this. I'm also attacking this. Alright. Um, yeah, let's continue to improve the king. He can't check me there. He could check me there. But I'm still not even a pawn up though. I do have the bishop. I have to keep this bishop. Do I have a winning advantage? We know this is a safe position from a knight for a king. This is less safe, of course. Okay. He wants my bishop. He's not having it. King was blocking the bishop going back to its c3. Nice safe c3 seat. My time's actually going up now. 
because of this 10 second increment. Huh. I'll bring my bishop back round to c3. I think I really need to target this weak g5 pawn. That targets it as well. The, the, how can he defend this pawn? It's going to take him two jumps with the knight to defend that pawn, right? Because this is not a natural knighty thing to do. So he has to do something. Okay, there's one. Okay, now I'm attacking it and the king has to come here. Huh? Hang on. Oh, that was that was crazy. It's it's a two two jump. Okay, the king defends anyway. So now what do we do? Now do we creep in? He can't cap, can't take here. He gets took. He can check me here, but then I I creep into his position. And I'm threatening to come in and eat his porridge. Save your porridge. You can't go there. If you come here, I'm coming right up your ass. Metaphorically. This is now a fork. You want to take my bishop, do you? Huh? Do you? Huh? So that's one way of getting out of a fork, by the way. Counterattack. Now he has to do this. He could, you know, if he does that, oh, if he does that, oh. So this is actually a fork, unless he cometh here. But that doesn't work, because I take him. So look how powerful the king becomes. My bishop is not really doing much of the work right now, right? These last moves, like, like last 10 moves, one, two, three, four, five, six of them have been king moves. And I haven't been running away. I've been on the offensive. King's become brutal in the ending. I think this is a very good position. Okay, I have this pawn, yes? Yes. I have five minutes. I can come in here now, threatening the knight. The knight is the only defender of that. What's he going to do? I don't know. I do not know. I think you're toast. However, <sighs> got to get my evil on. Got to channel my Snape, man. There's Potter. Can't do Snape. Alan Rickman's got the most amazing voice. Had, peace be upon him, Matt. Had the most amazing voice. Can okay, I attack in this? Yes. I don't know. Here. Here. Knights don't like you up in their face. They really don't. Okay, is he going to come around for this? Is that your plan, man? Okay, well, if you are, I'm going to do this. Uh, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. I win. There we go. I've already counted this, mate. I didn't even need to take my socks off to do that. You lose. Duh, duh. Does he want to do that? We can maybe defend. He wants to come to this square. This doesn't need work. Okay, well that's just too damn slow. Because I'm going to have queen here. And we win by resignation. And of course, as you can see, it's a forced mate in 27 moves at least. Uh, or less. Interesting game. Eighty-two from me. Not bad. Four great moves. Four misses. But I don't feel inclined to an 1800 rating. I will take that. I will take that. Let's just check. What was my rating on the last one? 
Not so good. I played 73 on them. I want to be playing 1600 plus <clears throat> in my rapid games. 1550. Not so hot. And I did miss a trick there. But let's, while we're here, I'm going to show you just how effective this Dima Dum Gambit is, right? My games as white against the French. Okay, the French defense normal. C4, right? C4, I'm winning 56% on 68 games. Knight C3, I've also won 56%. If I play the normal moves, E5, the advanced variation, I only, um, I've only won 40%, right? ED, the exchange variation, I've only won 48%. C4, right? And if they take, I'm winning 62% of the time. C5 here is their best move, but that's played less than half the time, right? If I view all the games in the current position, let's just have a look. So some of them, yeah, 70 moves. That, that's the one we just we just had, 65, you know. But look, there's a 17, 11, 17, 17, 16. There's quite a few quickies, 14, 11, 8 moves, 10 moves, 9 moves. Oh, I lost. Lost that one. <laughs> okay, uh, 1. And there's quite a few won by resi resignation too. You know, you can get into... But these cheapies, you know, these 8, 10, 11. That's... Uh, what's there in 11? Don't know. But it, it really is getting me some very cheap points. Let's go back as well and look at the... Um, Von Hennig as well. Von Hennig, if DE here, I'm winning 68%. You know, that is, it works, it's chess, you know. And this is combined blitz and rapid as well. So, hey, hey, there you go. Two games for you. One of them somewhat lackluster and uninspiring. The second one I thought was pretty good. And I, you know, it does feel good to get to an end game and, and, and figure out that you've got a winning position. Because that's all you need. You don't need six queens to get in a winning position. You need to get that pawn over the line first. I knew it. My opponent knew it. I counted it. He was out of his depth. And you saw how slow his knight was at the end of that game. It just couldn't, couldn't compete with my bishop. And when I had a queen on the board, it was all over. So that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. See you later, guys.